Hi everyone, this is your chess puzzler and I would like to start off with an interesting and super exciting chess puzzle. Today I'm going to introduce a challenge that is considered by many to be the greatest puzzle of all time. This puzzle is known as the tractor puzzle and became known when it was introduced during the Brussels Swift Super Chess Tournament in Belgium and to the Grandmasters who participated in that competition in 1987. The tournament was sponsored and fully financed by Swift. Among the Grandmaster participants, three were former world champions, Michael Tao, Anatoly Karpov and Garry Kasparov. Amazingly, only Tao was able to find the solution after having returned from his break. This puzzle has created a number of myths. Some people claim that it was an actual game and that it was published in a Russian chess magazine. I was not able to follow this up and could not find any evidence of whether this game was actually ever played. My research, however, reveals the puzzle was composed by a Dutch chess enthusiast, Heis von Brogle, in the mid-70s. Though a 70s puzzle, it was not until 1990 when the puzzle gained popularity and when it was published in a Dutch chess journal. In 1990, Heis von Brogle introduced his work at Arvis. Arvis stands for Alexander Ruth Vereniging for Schaag Einspel Studi, and it's an association established in 1988 in Amsterdam. In English, this translates as the Alexander Rook Association of Chess and Game Studies. In case you wonder about Alexander, he was one of the founding fathers of FIDE. FIDE was established in 1924, and Alexander held the chair for 25 years until 1949. So to recap, the study I'm introducing today was composed in the 70s by Van Brokler, but it was not made public until 1990. Firstly, it was discussed during the Arvis Gathering. Secondly, it was published in the Dutch chess magazine. And thirdly, it was passed around to Grandmasters during a Belgian Super Chess Tournament. By looking at the diagram, white is to play. At first glance, the position for white looks completely hopeless. Promoting the pawn to a queen will be met by a knight fork on f7 with a check, giving up the queen with the next move. White could prevent this capture if he chooses to underpromote to a knight so the f7 square is protected. Surprisingly, White has a much better move, and this is where the puzzle kicks in. Take all the time you need and try and work out White's best move or sequence of moves. For now, try this without the help of computers, and then you can compare your moves against the engine's moves. I must say, this is an extremely hard puzzle. Many engines will not be able to solve this puzzle, so don't be alarmed if you're unable to solve it yourself. Please let me know what engine you're using and what your engine suggests the best move is throughout the game in case you are using an engine. My research shows that most engines will queen the pawn at d8. By looking at the diagram, the two black pawns on c3 and e3 are at the brink of promotion and look unstoppable. We also note black is a ton of material up and has two knights, a dark colour bishop and four pawns against a knight and a light colour bishop and two pawns. You can pause the video and take as much time as you need to try the puzzle out. Once you have chosen your best moves, compare these to the solution given in this session. There are two decent moves for white but one move in particular will shatter black and this is the one we're interested in. The most correct move is knight of 6 check. If you found this move, give yourself 10 out of 10, but you're not out of the woods yet. 
because there are equally difficult moves to follow. The king cannot go to h8 because the pawn can be promoted to a queen with a check and white easily wins with a mate in two with king g7, queen e7 check, king h8 and queen f8 mate. Having excluded the move to h8, there are two moves to consider, g7 or g6. If the king goes to g6, white can move the bishop to h5 with a check, and this move allows a promotion to a queen at d8 with the following move. The knight cannot come to f7 as the bishop safeguards that square. If the king takes the knight, the pawn promotes to a queen with a check and white wins easily. Let's look at the analysis of a move to g7. By executing this move, the white knight can jump to h5 with a check. After the king moves to g6, what would you play? You can pause again the video to work out what white's best response is here. The best move for white is the shocking bishop c2 check. White is offering to sacrifice his only knight and this is the key to winning the game. The king's only logical move is to take the knight on h5. In the meantime, White still cannot promote his pawn because of the fork on f7 unless he under promotes to a knight. Believe it or not, by taking the knight on h5, the king has entered a force mate pattern and most engines can pick this mate up. But can you work out this mate yourself? We said previously that promoting was not an option for White, but after this sequence of moves, things have now changed. Knowing that a promotion to a queen would lead to a fork, this is what white plans and expects to happen. So white's next move is to queen the pawn. By taking the queen on d8 with a check, black has dug his own grave. It would have been slightly better to have moved the black king to g4, but expect no one to play or even see such a deep move. In fact, it doesn't really matter, and the result will be pretty much the same and always in favour of white. We can and will explore both options here. If you are familiar with this puzzle, the fork on f7 with a check spells the end for black. All studies of this puzzle look exclusively at this move, and no alternative move is considered. By forking the king and queen on f7, black has taken the bait. So after moving the king to e6, the black knight captures the queen with a fresh check. By moving the king to f5, white has fully utilised his plan and manages to not only prevent forthcoming possible checks from any of the black pieces, but also note he paralyses the black king on h5. A few combination mate threats arise, and for example, the power of the bishop cannot be underestimated. He only needs to slide to d1 to reach a mate. Black can easily prevent this from happening by playing e2. So by eliminating this mating chance for white, the white bishop can aim to find another square to force that mate. And he does this by posting himself on d4 and setting a knife for f3 with the next move. Once again, black can prevent mate by under promoting to a knight to cover the f3 square. Eroding any chances for white to mate on f3, the bishop has another trick up his sleeve and locates himself to d5. His aim is to play c3 and then d1 to achieve a new mate pattern. To prevent this from happening, 
Black covers the C2 square with his pawn, with C2 obstructing any chance for mate, the bishop changes white's plans and discovers a new square to achieve the same goal. He now occupies c4 and threatens to eliminate the knight on a6, but the bishop is not interested in removing that knight from the board, but instead wants to finish off the game by eyeing up the e2 square, which spells the end for black. Black can easily cover that threat, but this means yet another under promotion and again to a knight. With the bishop being able to freely move around the board, and the white king free of any checks, the bishop finds a killer move by moving to b5, creating a refresh mate threat at e8. Once again, and for the nth time, black uses all his resources to stop the bishop's plan, and covers the e8 square by moving the knight to c7. With the knight covering the e8 square, the bishop can now put in motion his last set of moves. By moving to a4, he sets an eye on d1 to finish off the game. Here, the end of the road for black has come. It can only delay the mating process by playing either knight to b3 or knight to e2, but the end result is the same. For example, if the knight goes to b3, bishop takes, and then after knight f3, the bishop pins the knight on f3, then mating 1 follows. I would like to return to our initial position and look at black's second option. By forcing the fork with the check on f7, and with the white king move to e6, a move by the black king to g4, is followed with h4 check. King f3, bishop e4 check. King e2, queen h2 check. King f1, bishop d3 check. e2, queen takes e2 check. King g1, queen f1 check. King h2, Queen f2 check and mates in 1. We can return to our earlier position to explore the king's move to g4 instead of the knight forking the king and queen with f7 check, which seems to be a far better move instead. White here can either move the king out of any possible checks, for example, move to c6, or the queen can occupy a better square, let's say e8 allowing though for a possible c4 discovered check. So after a queen moved to e8, black plays c4 check. With the king moved to c6, black's problems escalate. Black cannot protect both the knight on a6 and the pawn on e3 if the queen checks at c8. If the knight seeks cover to c5, the queen can collect the pawn on e3 and clears a major potential threat. Black's best response is to move the c knight to e6 in order to prevent the queen of reaching f4. With queen e5 aiming for a knight pin at f5 by the bishop, black can retrieve his king to f3. The king move to h5 leads to a forced mate in 2 through queen e2 check, knight f3, queen takes knight, king g4 and queen f5 mate. So after king f3 and bishop f5, black has no good squares left for any of his pieces and it is a matter of time before white is able to finish off the game with the position reached on the board. To conclude, Van Broeklid's tractor puzzle is one of the most difficult ones encountered, if not the most difficult puzzle around, and one where many experts and grandmasters fail to solve. Adding to the complexity of the tractor, this puzzle is one of the most beautiful compositions and one that has stood out from so many other problems. It is a particularly interesting one because even our best computer chess engines are unable to solve.
Since the bishop has mainly done all the work for white, the puzzle could easily have been named the dominating bishop, the amazing bishop journey, or the bishop rules, instead of it being called the tractor puzzle. Undoubtedly, Van Broekler's work is truly remarkable with the lesson that no one should give up, even when the position seems completely hopeless, and even when the odds seem against us. The lesson that comes out of Van Broekler's work is that irrespective of how many pieces you are down, and irrespective of whether many players will give up when faced with such a position, the idea is to play the game until the very end. Thank you for watching and especially for taking part in this video. I shall be back with equally interesting materials.